right, welcome to Cigar PR. This is our inaugural video. Hello YouTube, hello Facebook. I'm Robert Escher, this is my buddy Paul. We're from FK Kirsten Tobacconist in Seattle. We're going to give you guys a little instruction on the tools of the trade for cigar cutting. Paul, what do you got for us? Well, as you'll find out, there are a lot of different types of cutters out there. And mainly it comes down to preference. I mean, you have a V cutter, which looks like that. Uh, basically, these are good for torpedoes and things like that. And that's pretty much all you can use a V cutter for uh, when you get a small one like this. There are bigger ones out there that you can do as well. Uh, but basically, all it's going to do is literally, they call it a V cutter because it's going to put a V in it. And that's, that's pretty much it on a V cutter. Then you have what they call the guillotines. And those are probably your most popular that are out there. There are a bunch of different ones. This one is called a sure cut. And if you notice, it has a back to it and naturally a front. And it's made especially for people that are novices and not sure exactly how to cut a proper cigar. Because as you know, you can cut too much. And what happens is if you cut too much, you take the cap off. And naturally, it just shreds and doesn't do pretty well. Um, this is a little bit, this one doesn't have a backstop, but you know, if you got a cigar's got a little bit uh, longer cap or you feel sure of yourself, you can use just the regular guillotine cutter here. Then, of course, then you have your scissors. A little bit more expensive than all the others, of course, but with this here, it's more precise. I mean, you literally can cut it like a piece of paper. You can set it any way you want to go, whether you want to take it a little bit off or a lot off or the whole thing off. Finger or off. your finger as well. <laughs> <laughs> it also works. And then of course you have these, which is known as a Y cutter, because it has the wings. Um, then the other one we have is a bullet cutter. Bullet cutter is what I prefer to use. Now bullet cuts come in different sizes. Basically all you do is pull it open. Now the only thing with a bullet cutter, you can't use them with a torpedo unfortunately, right. because it doesn't work as you Let can get see you there. Some here. But me personally, I like a bullet cut mainly because I don't like to get tobacco after I've cut it back in my mouth. You know, you get the little bits and pieces, and you got to constantly either pull them out or spin them out or what have you. So I find it's a lot more cleaner with a bullet cut. So this is a, a standard Vitola. This is not a uh, this is not a torpedo. The difference you can see, torpedo looks like a torpedo. It's tapered on the end. This is the one you're going to want to use a V cutter for or a straight guillotine cutter. This one here's got a flat cap. You can use a bullet cutter on this, although this one's a little chewed up on the end, so I might I might go ahead and clip it a little more. But really, that last quarter inch of the cigar is what you're talking about. That's the cap area, and that's what you want to what you want to cut off, or at least clip, so you can take the cigar and smoke it properly. You're going to have all kinds of people that are going to tell you, "Oh, bullet cut is the best," or "No, it's got to be a V cut." Don't listen to them. Find out what you like. These all come in a wide range of uh, prices and so forth. You can get a V cutter for two fifty. You can get a V cutter for fifty bucks. You can get one of these guillotine cutters. This cost my buddy thirty dollars. He got it for me as a Christmas gift. But you can get these V cutters, or sorry, the guillotine cutters. You can get these things also for about two fifty. And then the shortcuts. These are these range anywhere from about eighteen to twenty dollars. And believe it or not, at FK Kirsten's, we've got a special on these ones. These are the shortcuts. And they come in two different styles. This one just happens to be black, but I also have we also have a complete stainless steel, and the black ones are on sale for just under nineteen dollars, like eighteen dollars and thirty-five cents. One other thing to mention is a lot of cigar lighters that you might buy. This is a Lotus lighter. This is a sixty-dollar lighter. It's got a triple flame on the top. More on that later. But on the bottom of this, you'll notice there's a little bullet cutter right on the bottom of the lighter. And a lot of cutter, a lot of lighters will come as a lighter cutter combination. I used to have a Calibri that had a V-cut on it, was a single torch lighter. Uh, I've seen some that have a, a guillotine type cutter built into the side. You pull out the side, you can clip the cigar like that. This one has the little bullet cutter on the end. You just kind of stick the end right there. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the bullet cut on this guy. I don't know how that cap's got like that, but we're going to see. When you're doing a bullet cut, you want to be real careful about not pushing too hard on the cigar. The thing is sharp enough on the end that it will eventually cut. I find Paul uh, taught me well that you get a little twist and just kind of keep a little constant pressure, but you don't want to squeeze your cigar too much 
or the thing's going to come apart on you. And the last thing you want to have is for that, well, see, now that cap came off. But, I mean, it was going to come off anyway. It didn't matter. But even that's not too bad because, as you can see, I got my little hole right there. I don't have a lot of loose leaves. And you'll find, you know, like this one here is one that I have. This one's a triple flame, also what a, a bullet on the bottom. But one of the other ones I do have is a single flame that actually has a bullet cut. This one here is like $20. And one of the reasons why I got this one is because of the shape. And also, I do have the Y cutter. And the reason why I did that was because on my travel case that holds up to 15 cigars, if I open this up for you and you can look in, you'll see I've cut little holes in there. And what the holes are for is because I can actually put my instruments right in there and it's all together. And now it's ready to go. And like I say, it holds up to 15. And with this case, it's actually waterproof. And also, this is one of the few cases you can run over with a car and not damage the cigars. But also, because it's big enough, I can actually keep my stuff in there all in one shot. You realize this being YouTube, we're going to have to run over that case with a car at some point. We probably will. I'm just telling you. This is not a case you can run over with a car. This is an expensive leather case. Uh, our buddy Paul actually sold this to me uh, for much less than he paid for it. This is about a $50 or $60 case. It's a beautiful, fine leather case. Uh, it had some cedar inserts. The thing is actually lined with cedar. You'll hear us talk a lot about Spanish cedar and, and how it's a neutral wood that is very important in storing your cigars and so forth. This will hold, this here's about, oh, I'd say what, about a 5 by 56 cigar. This will hold three of those real comfy-like, whether they're in cellophane or not. And, you know, that's, a, that's about an evening smoking for me, so I find that's really nice. And, you know, it's got a nice look to it, and put it in the pocket, and you're good to go. Now, one of the other things that you'll have to learn also, um, as a novice, is what they call toasting your cigar. And what that is, and I'm actually going to make a quick cut here on mine, just so I can get it ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and try the V-cut here on this one, since she recommended that. Absolutely. Well, toasting a cigar refers to lighting your cigar. And one of the big things that you want to do is you take your lighter, and what you're going to do is toasting the cigar means you're lighting the end. So the proper way of doing that is holding it on a, like a, a 45 degree angle, like so, and you want to go ahead and you want to move it all the way around. You want it an even uh, ash all the way around that. And to do that is, A, is moving your cutter, uh, your lighter actually, and also the cigar. And you're going to constantly turn that. And as you can see, you're going to get a nice even ash on that. So what you're going to do is do that for a minute or so. And once you see it completely evened out, then what you want to do is, at that point, put it in your mouth and puff. Which is like so. Now you see it has a nice ash. It's evenly burnt, evenly lit. That's the sign of a good cigar. Um, and as you can see, lit. I haven't got this one side quite done right, so... You always want to take a look at it. Another thing too, once you've got your foot toasted, give it a little blow. And if it's dark enough, you'll see it'll turn orange. And if it turns orange all the way around, you're good. If it's light, you look for the gray. The gray means it's lit. I think I got them okay there. Also, the difference, uh, Paul was using a single flame. This here is a Lotus Triple Flame. I like to use the Lotus Triple, I mean, any Triple Flame lighter is going to be about the same. I like that because I like a wider ring gauge cigar. It gives me a little bit more even burn. I find I'm not quite precise enough to use the single flame on mine, but again, it's personal preference. Well, hopefully that gets you a little bit of uh, knowledge on cutting and answer some of your questions and things like that. And as always, you know, at FK Kirsten's, we'll be glad to answer any questions as well. I mean, if you have questions, you can even just give us a call. Um, and we'll be glad to, to answer one of question. There is no dumb question except the question you don't ask. So don't feel silly and say, you know, I've got a dumb question. Well, no. The question you didn't ask is a dumb question. The question you ask 
is a good question. Absolutely, and don't let people tell you cigars are only for the rich, snobby people. We're two working class guys. He's running a cigar shop, and, and I'm a tutor for mathematics and so forth. I mean, you know, you don't have to be rich and famous to enjoy cigars. You don't have to be rich and famous to buy cigars. We got all kinds of sticks that are around the four to six dollar mark that are absolutely perfect. And we're running deals on some sticks for our Facebook and YouTube friends. So subscribe to the channel. We're going to have more videos. We're going to run over Paul's case with my van one of these days. You want to stay tuned for that. We're going to review these cigars that we're smoking here in a little bit as well. So stay tuned. We got good stuff coming. And we'll see you on Cigar PR. Happy smoking.